merge a sorted array. Um, so this is the first problem under the Kiwi merge pattern. And it's fairly straightforward. So you have two sorted arrays, numbers one, numbers two, and the number of each of the elements does it array, array the length of the arrays, m and n. And we want to implement a function that merges the second array into the first one. And you have to do modify numbers one in place. So you're not creating a new maybe numbers three that you're gonna put everything in. You're gonna tweak numbers, add numbers two to numbers one. And so this is an example. So we have this array. Um, numbers one comes out like this. It's three elements long. Numbers two is three elements long. And then we zero everything out here because it needs to fit. Um, we need to replace that with what's in numbers two. So we merge. And we get this. This is the output in this case when you merge these two sorted arrays. And similarly, you have three elements here. You add two extra zeros to fit these two elements. And you do this. Um, yeah, that's all there is to it, really. I think it's fairly straightforward. And we want to see the solution because we can. All right, so this is what happens. Nine steps. Uh, this is what it looks like. So initialize two pointers P1 and P2 with the last data element of both arrays, so M and N, and another P that points to the last index in numbers one, that is M plus N minus one, and the value at P1. Okay, so in this case, the value at P1 is less than the value at P2. So what do we do? We set what p was pointing at the end to that bigger value and decrement um, the one that was set right from the array that was set as p2 and in this case this is bigger so we set 55 here and move p1 here which is you see is what happens now in this case this is also bigger so 40 is going to be set here and p1 is going to move forward like that and then you keep going this is bigger so it's going to be set here and it's going to move forward again it's bigger it's going to be set here and everything is going to move forward again now it's smaller so this is going to become 25 and p2 is going to move to 9 right um lastly we're at 9 we're at 11 11 is going to be set here and then p is p is going to move forward um, and nine is going to replace what's here and we're done. And now this is what it looks like in code. Fairly straightforward. We have the merge sorted function. Um, let's hide all these things that we're not using. The merge sorted function, it takes numbers one, numbers two, we know the length of the number one, the length of number two, set P1 to the last initialized element of number one. So P1 is an M minus one, same. P2 for numbers two, it's uh, N minus one. So traverse backwards over the nums one array. So we, in JavaScript, we set P to N plus M minus one, right? So you avoid off by one errors. And so long as P is bigger than minus one, you decrement P. Uh, if P2 is less than zero, then we're at the end of numbers two array, we can break out of this loop. So this loop does all the heavy lifting for us. But if that's not the case, um, so far, P1 is still bigger than zero, and the number at P1 is bigger than whatever is at P2. We set it to the index at P, that is our major um, iterator, P, to what's at P1. And then otherwise, set it to what's at P2 and decrement. That's all. This is the whole function, then you just return numbers one. Super simple, super straightforward. That's all that's happening. And then, since we're done with this, we can look at the time complexity of this solution. So it's O of n plus m. 
n and m are the counts of initialized elements in both arrays. So the total length of the array, space complexity is one because you only use the space required for the three indices. Your space requirements don't grow. That's all. Thank you. See you in the, in the next video.